Christianity of the world once again. Uh, uh, the, uh, just since 1996, before the national economy collapsed last year, uh, the, I should say just since 2006, before the national economy collapsed on top of our already dying one, the New York Stock Exchange set 54 record level highs just in that three years. We never saw it. It never changed us. Uh, communities around America, and I take a, 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 uh, I'll take responsibility for this, about uh, now 12 years ago I started, played a small role in starting a conversation about how we could, uh, we could uh, improve local government, perhaps uh, look at it differently. Uh, I, I founded a number of conferences at the Magnificent, the National Treasure of the Chautauqua Institution. In that, uh, in that connection, I, uh, I did what my father used to always uh, tell me, he'd say, look, if you want to actually understand something, you can't just read about it, you've got to go and see it. So I got on a plane, I've done what we've all done. I went to Charlotte, Mecklenburg County, the place that's taken so many of our young people. I went to Fairfield County, Virginia. I went out to Portland, Oregon, uh, the Louisville, Kentucky. I'm sure you've been there, all nice places. All really nice people. Couldn't hold a candle could not hold a candle to what we have here in terms of man-made and God-given gifts. And yet they're moving ahead, they're creating vibrant economies, they're retaining our young people, and they're kicking our butts. And the reason is, is because they're embracing these new doctrines, these new innovative ideas of local governance. In the course of these past four years, not only uh, have I attended, uh, uh, let's see, the other night was my 255th town or village board meeting in Erie County. I've also gone and gone to town board meetings outside. And by the way, let's tell the truth. You go to a local government meeting here in our community, you're told to sit down, remain quiet, not make any quick moves. <laughs> uh, the uh, the honest God truth. You go to town board and there's, a, there's an atmosphere of rancor and bitterness. It's not us. And we don't, we don't, it doesn't have to be. And yet we accept it. Well, I don't accept it. Because I've gone to these other community meetings and you know what? Where our, our town, our town uh, uh, our village board meeting is a lecture, in other communities, it's a conversation. And I can tell you that interviewing our local politicians' counterparts around the country, the most innovative ones, the one fo most forward-looking ones, the most interesting ones, and the dynamic ones, here's what they tell me. What they say is, is, if you're a local elected official in America today, every decision you make should be made in service of one idea, and it's a very simple idea. And that idea is that a educated, healthy, protected and diverse community attracts other people. In other words, the whole idea of local government being involved in creating jobs or economic development, it's a bunch of hooey. And what's happening today in America in, in local governance, the buzzword, it used to be regionalism, it used to be consolidation, they've all done that. We've missed that boat. Uh, the, uh, that ain't coming back. The, the new buzzword, the new sizzle is retrenchment. And the really forward-looking local officials, they're sort of gathering themselves back in and they're dropping all of the extraneous work and they're focusing on those public policies in which they can have the most effect. Education, land use planning to restore bucolic settings like this, like transportation and the like. Um, I have to tell you something else. And this is under the category of tough love. Again, at our board meetings, you know, there's discussions about where to hold the high school prom or, uh, or where the Halloween parade is going to take place or, uh, or who's going to get this job or what's going to take place or how hard, how many conferences everyone's gone to to go down to Albany to try to make them change. Outside of Western New York, you know what they talk about? They talk about not the government. They don't, they're, they're less concerned about balancing the government budget because they all have to do that. They're more interested in balancing the community budget in finding and determining ways in which local government can be a nurturing presence to create a nurturing private uh, uh, environment for public investment. And I heard an interesting discussion the other day in a town board meeting, I should say a couple months ago, uh, the, uh, in which they talked about um, two concepts. One was community metabolism. Uh, it's a Richard Florida, you know, the great urbanist who's at the University of Toronto. He's got this phrase called community metabolism. What that is, the definition of that is the rate at which a community can take an idea and turn it into a product. And he rates every community in America at that rate, the speed. You know where we are? The very bottom. The very bottom. Because there's so many levels, so many, much bureaucracy, so many bosses that we have to sort of gain their consent and assent. And then they also talk about this other idea that's called talent clustering, which is a very interesting idea. And that is to be a successful community, you know, to, to create and sustain and attract the young folks with their education ideas who are going to drive the new economy, you have to cluster them together in highly dense numbers, talent clusterings. And from that, from that sort of dense, clash of ideas and energy and intellect comes the new products of tomorrow. We're missing that conversation because we're all wound up in turf protection and, uh, and, uh, and discussions about, again, uh, the, uh, these mundane matters, which in other communities, what they've done is they've turned those decisions back where they belong. 
in the hands of citizens and citizens committees, which we had in most of our towns and villages here up until the 1970s, they were then abolished, because as we lost population and capital in an effort to rationalize their existence, our public servants who are the finest in America, we have the best services, they started inserting themselves into more and more decision-making processes as a way of rationalizing their existence, which is understandable. Just as we all do, we're all on edge. We all don't know we're going to have a job tomorrow, whether we're going to have a pension, whether we're going to, be, going to be able to pay for prescriptions and the drugs and the like. What we have here is a dysfunctional community that's most manifested and dramatically reflected in our governance. So against that backdrop about four years ago, uh, as Inez was kind enough to, uh, to mention, I thought to myself, what the hell? What, why is this? Um, and I thought to myself, look, we all know that we have a little bit too much government around here, but no one had actually sat down and done the hard work and counted up the number of elected officials we have in our community and determined how much is a matter of, of compensation and health care and retirement pension, how much it costs taxpayers. So I, uh, in collaboration with UB Law School, and under the auspices of several local foundations, I spent a year and a half. I went to each of the 25 towns, 16 villages, and three cities in Erie County. That's 45 governments for now down to 900,000 people. And I spent about three weeks in each town hall or village hall, found out what everyone does and how they do it, filed a number of FOIL uh, requests because the culture in government and local government, it's not, it's not anyone's fault. It's sort of an institutional culture of, of um, it's been so long since anyone's asked them what's really going on, they resisted a little bit. But we got all the information, and here's what I found. Good thing you're sitting down. I'm going to take Erie County here for a moment, then we'll discuss Chautauqua briefly. In my home county of Erie, again, one of the 10 fastest dying communities in America, we have 439 elected officials. 439 elected officials, uh, the, uh, which is 10 times the number, 10 times the number of any like-sized community in America. Uh, the Mecklenburg County, they've got about 750,000 people, 33 elected officials, to our 439. Uh, Greater Indianapolis, which formed UNIGOV some 27 years ago, uh, 850,000 people, 149 politicians, to our 439. New York City, which I included in my study just for dramatic effect, New York City, 8.9 million people, and all the, di the, the diverse economic and social and racial differences that they have to reconcile and all the challenges they have there. One government, one government, 64 politicians for New York City. <clears throat> and what my study revealed is, uh, as it turns out, to sustain those 439 elected officials in Erie County, it costs taxpayers $32 million per year. Now, that's not for um, government services, it's not for garbage pickup, it's not for uh, cultural support, it's not for transportation, it's not for education, it's just to pay the bosses. So what that means is, that over the past decade in Erie County, uh, the, uh, while we endured all those losses, population loss, job loss, two control boards because they don't speak to each other, we paid our elected officials $320 million. That's over a quarter of a billion dollars. And what I've been doing now for the last four years is going around town to town, city to city, and posing one respectful question, which is, are we using that money wisely? Could we do it a little differently? And by the way, if you think about that question for a moment, I know sometimes I have these aids to show you, $320 million over a decade. If you think about that number for a moment, you know what it tells you? There's a lot of capital in Western New York. That's a lot of money. And again, the question is, is could we take a portion of that money and do, and with it, um, perhaps uh, serve other useful purposes? So, uh, the, um, after I concluded the study, you may have heard about a year and a half ago, I went on what I call the smaller government tour. And I went back to each of the governments in Erie County. By the way, now forgive me, and you know, it, it, it's just, this is not any individual's fault. This is not any politician's fault, certainly, what I'm gonna tell you. It's your fault, and it's my fault. The only place that has more concentration of expensive elected officials in government than Erie County that I can find is Niagara County and Chautauqua County. Now you have here, what, about 200 and 20,000 people? I'm sorry, 120. I'm confusing you with the, with the, with the Niagara County. Forgive me. 120,000. You have the same number of 40 some governments. 40 some governments for 120,000 folks. The, uh, how many county legislators do you have here? 25. 25 county legislators. The average size of a county legislature in America is seven legislators. Doesn't matter the population. San Diego County, 2.1 million people. Five county legislators. The, um, we have this high concentration here in upstate New York. And by the way, there's just a long story to, to, to I can tell you the, uh, maybe in the question and answer what, how it came about. But I took all this information. I went back before each of the 25 town boards, village boards. I shared what I'm sharing with you. And I asked them 
to um, consider this one reason, I thought, measured, responsible solution that I devised, which is that each of the, our municipalities reduce their number of elected officials by two. Uh, I also think, and I feel strongly about this, that in addition, our 16 villages in Erie County should merge, those village governments should dissolve and merge into the surrounding town. We can no longer uh, afford them, and they're all sort of vestigial leftovers from the 19th century when it took three days to communicate you know, across town, and the, right. they make, don't make any more sense. If we did that in Erie County, we would save $12.9 million in, 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 in uh, taxes per year. That'd be $129 million over a decade. We could change the, the face of, uh, of the community. I respect